Hello. In this video I want to take a look at something that we've all got in our houses and we use um, on a daily basis, maybe several times a day. It's the siphon. So I'm going to have a look at what drives a siphon. Specifically I'm going to look at the siphon in your WC and maybe we'll have a peek at um, air pressure and what that means as well in the same context. Well, to understand how the siphon works in our WC, uh, we have to think about a very basic fact in the subject area of hydrostatics. Um, and this is a fundamental piece of physics and it tells us about the pressure difference between different parts of a fluid. So if I look at a level here in our container full of let's say water for convenience sake and the pressure down here uh, we find that the difference between the two is governed by a very simple equation and it's the density of the fluid so in this case it would be the density of water times g the gravitational acceleration of the earth uh, multiplied by the height difference between the two so between one level and another Right, so the difference in those heights is, is h in this equation. That tells us the pressure difference. And it's this fact that's going to drive um, the siphon in our WC. It's all driven by gravitational attraction, as we shall see. So here's our container again. Uh, full of water or whatever fluid it might be um, but I'm going to modify it a little bit so let's make a hole down here uh, and we're going to change our system to one that looks like that so I'm going to add a tube onto the side of it Okay, now it's not going to surprise you because you would have seen this in action many, many times in different places. Uh, but the level of the fluid over in this right hand branch uh, of our system will be exactly the same as the level in the other side. And this is basic hydrostatics. That gravitational attraction that I told you about uh, is going to be uh, pulling this water down exactly the same uh, way as it's pulling this water down. So they'll end up flowing until those levels are equal. Now obviously if we change this so that this was our arrangement then the water is going to flow out because there is always going to be a height difference so this is our equation that we're worried about of course or concerned with here it's that height difference that controls the excess pressure uh, at this outlet so until that shrinks to zero there will be a flow of liquid okay so far so intuitive, but let's get on to the siphon proper.
So we have a slightly different setup here. Uh, we've got our container or reservoir of, um, of water over here still. But into it, we've put a tube and at the moment we've got one end blocked. But we've contrived somehow to fill this tube up with water also. All right, so this is a standard sort of arrangement you'll have seen and probably used before uh, to siphon one fluid out of another. So this may be your finger over the end of a, of a hose down here, for instance. All right, but immediately we have a pressure difference. Um, and we still have this relationship that we had uh, originally between um, pressures at different points. So effectively, because this tube is open uh, to the fluid down here, at the moment, the height difference that is of central interest to us is this one here. So this is our H. Which means the pressure difference between here and here is again given by the density uh, of the fluid, in this case water, multiplied by uh, the acceleration due to gravity, G, and this height difference, H. So the bigger the value of H, the bigger the pressure difference. Take our finger off this end, so we open this end out uh, and um, the water will flow. It will flow because there is excess pressure from this reservoir compared to this uh, point down here. And that will continue to flow around this tube uh, until either the height difference has been reduced to zero or, of course, if that's never the case, until um, there is no continuous line of water anymore. In other words, we've, we've taken the fluid level down here uh, to the bottom of the tube. So all we have now is air uh, in there. It used to be thought that you, we could explain this using a model of a chain coming out of a uh, over the side of a bucket. So the weight of the chain down here would actually pull the rest of it out. Uh, and that was applied to um, siphons in a very similar way. So each of the molecules in the water, say, would be pulling on uh, the molecules just above it and actually dragging the water out uh, as though it was a chain. Uh, that's actually not what's going on here at all. Um, we do need a continuous uh, water fill tube for this to work, but it's not the fact that the water is pulling um, the rest of the water out. Uh, and it's not actually to do with atmospheric pressure on the water here, which is another theory uh, that's been around. Uh, it is purely due to the gravitational attraction of the Earth on the water. Um, and basically that is greater down here than it is up here. It's like dropping something from a height, so whatever the object is up here um, if we let go of it in mid-air, it falls under the effect of gravity uh, until it can't fall any further. That may be because it ends up landing on a surface of some sort, whatever. But this object, when it's up there in the air, held up there, has something called potential energy. And it's the same sort of process in our siphon. So in this case we convert potential energy when we let go of our object into kinetic energy, the energy of motion, 
it falls back down. Well, the same sort of thing is happening here. We have water that has more potential energy up here, because it's higher, than it does down here. So what then of our WC? We've got an arrangement very similar to the sort of um, diagrams that I've showed you before. Uh, that looks a little bit like a siphon tube. Uh, in fact, it's sitting inside a tank of water. So here's our water in here uh, and the toilet bowl uh, is sat below right, with an outlet to our sewage system. So providing we can get this siphon going then the physics of the operation uh, is exactly as it was before. We've got here between the water level uh, in the reservoir, the WC above, and the end of our siphon tube, we have a height difference and therefore we have a pressure difference. And the pressure difference, remember, uh, was just the density of the water multiplied by gravitational acceleration and the height difference. So again, as long as this height difference uh, is above zero, then we will have water flowing through our siphon tube until we've exhausted the water in this tank and then of course the siphon fills up with air uh, and everything stops. So the basic physics of the operation is uh, exactly as it was before, but we've got the one remaining complication now that we need actually to fill this tube up at least um, sufficiently that we can start this siphon going and then of course we'll have a flow of water around here um, while this condition is still met that we have a uh, we have a height difference and therefore um, a pressure difference and therefore an extra an excess of potential energy up here compared to down here and it's that energy that's going to drive the process. So our one remaining uh, little bit of mechanism up here is the lever on the outside uh, of our WC or if you've got an antique one this might be a chain operation but nevertheless this is going to operate a valve and a essentially a pump system uh, down below and by whatever the mechanism down here and it will be a series of levers um, with hinges what it's going to try and do is push water up into this tube until we get the siphon action going. So what's attached to the other end of this set of levers uh, is a simple flap valve and a flat valve is really simple, really reliable. It is literally a flap of material with a hinge. So if we're moving it upwards through the fluid, uh, this valve gets forced shut. Uh, if we reverse that operation and we move it down this way, uh, the valve is forced open and of course we can then get fluid going through it. So when we flush our WC, when we move this lever fast enough, and it, if you move it really, really slowly, you won't get the siphon operating, you won't get a flush. But if you move it quick enough, you've essentially closed this flap valve and whatever water is above it is now being pushed up into this tube uh, to create a filled siphon. So we've now got water, of course, in our tank, but now also we've pushed it up into uh, this siphon tube. And once we've got that condition right, so in other words, we've got a, a positive height difference between here and here with a continual stream of water in between, then our siphon will start and it will carry on until 
we've exhausted the water in this tank and started getting air uh, in the tube, which of course is exactly what you saw uh, in the little clips that were inserted earlier. So having established that our siphon needs gravity rather than needing uh, air as such, I thought we could just perhaps finish this off by looking at um, atmospheric pressure since it was at one stage uh, a theory behind how siphons were working. Um, atmospheric pressure is simply caused by the gravitational um, pull of the earth on our atmosphere. So every molecule of gas in our atmosphere is being pulled back towards the earth and that's what keeps our atmosphere uh, around us. So this atmosphere, the density of it, how much it is being pulled down obviously depends on the mass of the planet. That's what determines the gravitational attraction and atmospheric pressure then uh, is uh, dependent then on the composition of whatever the gas in the atmosphere might be. Um, and you know this gets modified by the Earth's rotation and, and uh, uh, you know wind directions and all the rest of it but uh, it's very closely approximated simply by if I take a piece of the Earth's surface here, for instance, uh, a good approximation, if this is our atmosphere above, is simply that if we take a patch of ground down here, for instance, uh, it's the weight of the atmosphere above, so it's mass times gravitational attraction, that gives us whatever the air pressure is down here at the surface. So we're really, when we're talking about atmospheric pressure, we're really talking about uh, something that is related to the weight or the mass uh, of atmosphere above us. So a standard atmosphere, uh, you might have seen um, listed as corresponding to um, 760 millimetres of mercury. That's simply the height of a mercury column in a barometer. Um, or, for instance, if we're inflating, <coughs> excuse me, inflating the tyres on our cars, uh, this sometimes is referred to as one atmosphere. Uh, and that's really just defined as, as the air, air pressure um, at sea level on average. Uh, if we're in old units, of course, um, this actually works out uh, to be about 14.7 pounds per square inch. So that's average sea level atmospheric pressure. So in other words, if we look at this surface down here, so let's take every square centimetre, for instance, of our heads. Um, so one square centimetre uh, is, um, has above it about, just well, it's just over, but it's about 1.03 kilograms uh, of air. That would be the mass, and if we multiply that by g, uh, that's actually what gives us the downward force, um, the weight of the air. So above every square centimetre of us, we've got a kilogram of air. Sounds a lot, doesn't it? Uh, but of course that's balanced by the pressure from within our bodies, from within each cell, in fact. So we don't actually feel it but it is there. That's what gives us atmospheric pressure. As I say, it's an aside from the siphon, um, but I thought it was a fairly interesting one as well. It's, um, well, I suppose it's partly 
physics in the house we have this sort of atmospheric pressure uh, within the house as well as outside it but I hope you've enjoyed a look anyway at how your WC works and the bit of physics that's behind it. Bye for now.